Welcome to this additional video in the Life in Half a Second Challenge about the application of the Gold Pyramid. After shooting all the videos and watching them and then watching them again, I realized that you could really use an additional video that shows the construction of the Gold Pyramid. So I've drawn out the Gold Pyramid template here and I want to use an example and actually we can go back to video two with John the Entrepreneur and let's use his example to fill out a Gold Pyramid. Hopefully this will make it more tangible, more real for you and will allow you to construct your own goal pyramid uh, in an easier more simplistic way so remember John he was the entrepreneur in video two that didn't have work-life balance when we explored some of the negative things in his life he said he was working all the time he's working weekends he's working at night seven days a week he's working he's got a family he wants to spend time with the family but he can't because he's trapped in the business so the ultimate negative that we're trying to address is work-life balance and when I drilled it down with John, why can't, why don't you have work-life balance? What's the real issue here? John says, I can't afford to hire people to do some of the work that needs to be done in the business. And then I would ask, why can't you afford to hire them? Because there's not enough profit in the business. Why is there not enough profit in the business? I'm not selling enough. Or what I'm selling isn't priced high enough to generate the necessary profit. And why aren't you selling enough? Maybe there's not enough leads coming into the business. I don't have enough people to sell, enough people that are interested in what I'm selling. So there's this whole drill down beneath the problem. Like the tip of the iceberg is the actual problem and then there's this whole drill down that we can use to create a goal pyramid on. So let's go to the goal pyramid and the ultimate goal at the top is work-life balance. Now my writing might not be that neat, but hopefully you can see it. You've got work life balance. The first thing we've got to do is precisely define what that means. It's a great goal, but it could mean anything. Work-life balance. That might mean working 80 hours a week and having two hours of free time on the weekend. It might mean working 10 hours a week. Everybody might have a different interpretation of that particular goal. So we need to nail it with some numbers. We need to turn the goal into numbers. So again, using John, he might define work-life balance as no weekends. When the weekend comes, he wants to have that time to himself and his family. He wants the phone to be off. He wants the computer to be shut down. He wants to spend that time enjoying his kids, being with his wife, doing uh, some activities with his friends or hobby leisure. That's one uh, element of the goal. Second is that during the week, he only wants to work eight to six week days. So to get a free weekend, he doesn't want to work from five o'clock in the morning to midnight every day and then have a free weekend, right? That's, that defies the whole purpose. So free weekends and the weekdays have a normal uh, day from eight to six. And lastly, and probably this is the most important part, he wants to, able, he wants to be able to have a vacation each year, which let's say that's two to four weeks, where he gets away from the business. So instead of being trapped inside the business and not be able to get away, he wants to have enough automation in the business, enough employees, enough processes, enough systems where he can actually leave the business and have a normal vacation. Now for this to happen, he needs additional staff. It can't happen with the current staffing, which might only be him, that he has in the business. Now for this to happen, for John to be able to hire additional staff, he needs increased profit. And let's leave it undefined for now what exactly increased profit means. But these three things are highly dependent upon one another. For John to be able to extract himself from the business, regain his weekends, regain his evenings, be able to spend time with family, be able to switch off the phone and the email and actually go and enjoy kids or some leisure activities, he needs additional staff in the business. So this allows him to achieve this. But to get additional staff into the business, as he said at the beginning, he doesn't have enough profit to do that. So he needs an increase in profit to hire the additional staff. These three things are related. And you know, on a side note, in my experience as an entrepreneur and mentoring other entrepreneurs, I, I believe that almost 90% of all small business problems stem from this.
There's, there's just not enough money in the business. There's not enough money to hire the right people. There's not enough money to do some strategic marketing initiatives. There's not enough money for that or this, which leads to the entrepreneur doing everything, making up the shortfalls by working in the business. They become trapped in the business. That can lead to being burnt out or just tired. It leads to all kinds of problems. So this isn't unique to John. In my experience, 90% of small business problems stem from not enough profit being generated. So we need to focus on this. We need to increase the profit in the business. How do we increase the profit in the business? We need more customers, clearly. But to get more customers, we need more leads. We need more people interested in becoming customers. And one other thing that we need to do is we need to increase prices. If you have more leads coming into the business, you can increase your prices. And even if some of these leads don't become customers, that's okay because the people that do become customers are now paying more. And this all together, these three boxes will definitely increase the profit of the business. And we'll put some numbers to them in a second, but let's just leave it the way it is. So what are some things directly below that we can do? Well, one, we need to increase marketing activities. We also need to raise the profile of the business to build more awareness, more visibility, more credibility. John is also going to have to do some of these things at the beginning because he doesn't have any additional staff. So one of the things that's eating up his time is bookkeeping. So let's outsource the bookkeeping. That doesn't cost uh, a lot and will free up some of his time to allow him to work in some of these areas, which he's gonna to have to do himself. And I also want John to start documenting some of his systems and processes around how he conducts his business, the way he markets and so forth, because this will come in handy when he hires additional staff. All right, so what we now have is a fully drawn goal pyramid, and keep in mind that this pyramid will change. This is just the first draft. It's like I said, I think it was in video four, you're creating a first draft. This is a really good first draft because it takes the main problem, the main negative that the entrepreneur has, John, and the drill down that I conducted before goes all the way down to some of the activities and things that the entrepreneur will need to do to address the top problem. So what happens now? Two things. One, this uh, particular goal pyramid, every milestone should be quantified in some way or it should be tied to some specific task. So we can start at the bottom. So for example, outsourcing bookkeeping, the uh, quantification here is who and when. Who do we get to do our bookkeeping and when do we outsource? Hopefully we can get a referral, we can get a recommendation, or we can find a good company to do it, and we can begin outsourcing it in two, three weeks from now. So that becomes an action item underneath this milestone. This is, these are the small milestones, they're the easiest to do. With the additional time that John's gonna have, he has to work on these next two boxes. He has to increase the marketing activities that are being conducted in the business. That might mean, for example, updating the website, it might mean blog plus other social media, it might mean events. What about running an event, whatever this particular business is about, whether it's photography, fitness training, uh, life coaching, business coaching, whatever type of business this is, what about creating marketing activities that are going to drive more leads into the business. It's not good enough to have a business that's based on only referrals because you're waiting for the phone to ring. You're sitting there in the office waiting for the phone to ring and then all of a sudden you might have someone to sell to. So you need to increase your marketing activities. Networking. And there might be a whole list that might be uh, in, in blog and social media. We might put pay-per-click or LinkedIn advertising. 
or other media. So there needs to be a list, an entire list of activities that John's going to do that are related to increasing marketing activities that will drive more leads. Something that will help this box and all of these boxes here is if John raises his profile. His profile and the business profile. How can you raise your profile? Well, what about if John tries to get some uh, news articles on his business? He could run an event, invite media to the event. What if he writes articles for a magazine, for example, on his particular expertise? He might be an accountant, he might be a lawyer, again, he might be a personal trainer. Can he approach some magazines or papers and write a column or article on that? Maybe do a case study around one of his customers, whatever the case might be. What are some other things that might raise uh, John's particular profile? What about speaking? What about being a speaker at events that are tied to his particular industry or his particular theme? So there's a whole number of things that he can do to increase his profile. The higher his profile is, the greater his profile, the more visibility he has, the more he's regarded as an expert. That makes it easier to conduct some of these marketing activities because the more visibility you have, the greater your profile, the more credibility you have the easier it is to market. Another thing down here might be a referral program. He might also think about partnerships that he could create. If he's a lawyer, maybe a partnership with an accounting practice where they work on similar types of projects for customers, whatever they might be. So again, we're doing an exhaustive analysis here around activities related to these particular boxes, systems and processes, documentation. He needs to write out all the things he wants to document in his business, how things are done, so that when additional staff are hired, they know what to do. They know how to do it. If he increases his marketing activities and he increases his profile, John's going to get more leads. If he gets more leads and he processes them in the same way he used to process them in the past, he's going to get more customers. This more leads will also allow him to increase the price. If you've got five people coming to your business every week asking uh, about your services or your product and you increase the price, then you might only have one of those people turning into a customer. And that might be no good, you might be afraid of that. Entrepreneurs are afraid of rate rises when there's few leads coming in. But if you have 50 leads coming into your business each week or 100 or whatever number, even if some of those leads don't turn into customers, what's left is going to be still a lot more customers at a higher price point, both of which drive increased profit. All right, we've got an entire goal pyramid now, and what would be good is to add some numbers. We've got a lot of activities, things that will support these particular milestones, but it would be great to add some numbers in particular places. So in terms of outsourcing bookkeeping, we talk about who and when. The when is the number and we choose a particular company. Increase marketing activities. So if we say that we're going to do events, how many events here? If you're going to do uh, a referral program, more specifics around that. Who would be natural candidates with whom you can do this referral program? What would be the incentive structure? If you're going to network, how many networking events do you plan on going to each particular month? So you try to nail this down into numbers so it's not vague. So you don't have a goal pyramid that says, ah, events. I'm going to increase marketing activities by doing events. That sounds great, but are you talking about one event per year, one event per quarter, one event per month? Are you talking about one event per week? Are you talking about events that you're going to put on and invite people to? Or are you talking about events that you're going to go to and try to network? Get specific, turn it into numbers. Same with raising your profile. You might want to approach the media. How many? Are you going to approach every newspaper, every magazine that's out there? How many number of outlets are you going to approach? When are you going to approach them? Same with articles, speaking. What's your, how are you going to try to attempt to enter the speaking? Maybe you can also put out press releases. Think about some of the customer wins that John might have had. He could put out a press release on every particular win that he's had. Document systems and processes. When? How much needs to be? Uh, documented. So you move up here, increase prices. By how much? More leads. 
How much more leads, number or percentage? Do you want to double your leads, triple your leads? Do you want to increase it by 20%? John needs to get very, very specific, have numbers around all of these things. More customers, again, how many more? Percentage wise, increase profit. How much more profit, number, percentage? And by now, all of this should be driving this. How much more profit is needed and who has to be hired to allow John to reach the top. So do we need to increase profit by $200,000 a year for John to hire, for example, a personal assistant, a marketing manager, and another person that does delivery, whatever delivery is, taking a photograph, training somebody, coaching, it doesn't matter. With these additional three people, he achieves some level of automation because this person's in charge of generating leads, this person also delivers the same service or product that John does, and the assistant backs them up. So I'm here I'm assuming that John was by himself to begin with, and now his plan is to hire a three additional people that will give him his weekends back allow him to work eight to six during the week and step away from the business each year to take a vacation because these people are operating the business while John is away. Now, John's goal pyramid looks fantastic. It's a beautiful first draft, however, it can change over time. There are two things that he now needs to do. One, he needs to go and investigate these particular boxes from a knowledge point of view. Who does he know that is an absolute gun in marketing activities. Maybe there's someone in town that is a star in marketing and generating leads. They're just a superstar. If John can't find someone like that, then he needs to read books about lead generation in his particular business. The amount of material available online in books and blogs, videos is endless. He needs to find that material and start investigating it. The more he reads, it might change some of the things he's gonna do because he educates himself. Perfectly normal, absolutely okay. The more you learn, the more you might rethink what you're doing and doing it in a more efficient manner. He needs to also do the same thing for raising his profile. Who has a fantastic profile? Who can he approach and talk to about how they became a speaker, how they got into the news, how they began writing for magazines, and get pointers and advice? Can he rent books from the library or read online about building credibility, increasing uh, visibility of your business, uh, breaking through all of the noise? So what John is now gonna be doing is in each of these boxes, he's gonna be investigating how to particularly in boxes where his knowledge is very limited. John might be a technician, whether a technician is a plumber, lawyer, accountant, personal trainer, photographer, all of those are technical people in the sense that they do something very well. So his expertise might not be sales and marketing. So he needs to investigate these areas, learn how to. And the second thing that John needs to be doing is meeting with his goal buddy every single week and going through this. So in other words, he meets with the go buddy and says, look, this is, I've just outsourced uh, my bookkeeping to such and such firm, so this is now done. I can cross it off the list. I'm really now focusing on these two areas. And he tells the goal buddy, these are the things that I'm doing. These are the books that I'm reading. These are the people that I've identified in my community that are really good at these things and I'm gonna to try to meet with them as well. And then the goal buddy goes through his or her goals, what they're trying to achieve, which could be completely different. They could be health goals, it doesn't matter. That weekly interaction keeps John focused and committed to the pyramid, and the goal buddy's gonna be giving him feedback on this or that. The goal buddy also keeps John accountable. If John sits there and says, this is what I'm gonna do next week, the likelihood of him actually doing it because he's committing to it is very, very high. So look, I thought that this would have been helpful in the sense that we actually construct a goal pyramid. Very messy. Uh, remember that there's a template uh, on the Life in Half a Second Challenge website that you can download and you can use the template. And I'd encourage you to do that because it will change so much. So instead of handwriting it, crossing it out and making it messy, you can just up, uh, update the electronic format. And, uh, and whenever you do items, you delete it from the template and add new ones as you get to them. But this is how it's actually done. It's, and, and as you go along, as John creates this, you know what? Some of these things might be blank. He knows he needs to increase leads, but he knows nothing about marketing and he knows nothing about raising his profile. His pyramid might look like this. 
This is a start because John knows he needs more leads to get to the profit. So now he's going to be asking the question, how do I generate more leads? And then he will again approach people in the community or read books about increasing leads. And those people and those books will lead him to, you need profile, you need marketing activities. So even if some of the boxes are blank, perfectly okay, John will ask the necessary questions or you'll ask the necessary questions to fill out the whole goal pyramid. I hope this was helpful. I hope you use the template. This is the heart of the book. This is your one page plan for whatever you're trying to achieve. You have to carry this in your pocket if you wanna achieve your specific goal. So please create the first draft, no matter how messy, no matter how many blank holes you have in it, it's a start.